Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna to talk about usually what are presented as first problems in mathematical induction, but done in a way that completely avoids induction at all. We'll start with one of the classic first examples, which is the sum of the first n positive integers. So what we're gonna do is illustrate the sums at hand by pictures and see what we can do with the pictures to figure out what our answers are gonna be. So we want a formula for this sum in terms of n. And what I'll do is draw some dots corresponding to each of the sum ends. So I'll draw one dot for this one, then two dots for the next, three dots for the next, etc. in this nice sort of clean array. I'll have n minus one dots here, and then n dots at the bottom for the last sum end. Let's go ahead and actually label that. So we have one dot, two dots, three dots, up to n minus one and n dots. Okay, so our goal is to figure out how many dots there are in this entire picture in terms of n. So what we'll do is rotate this picture 180 degrees in this direction. So we'll get kind of a similar figure, but it looks like it's sort of inverted. Um, so we'll have this one dot moving over here. I'll draw it in a different color, red, and I'll label it as well. We have one dot here. Then we'll have these two dots over here, etc. We'll have the n dots at the top, n minus one dots in the next line, n minus two dots in the next line, etc. Because we obtained the red dots by rotating the blue dots, the number of blue dots and the number of red dots is exactly the same. So if you wanna know what this sum S is, it's gonna be half the number of dots that we see in this entire array. Okay, so if we look at any row, we have one dot and then n dots. Here we have two dots, then n minus one dots, which totals n plus one in both situations. In the next row, we have three plus n minus two, which is also n plus one dots. In fact, every single row here has exactly n plus one dots. And the number of rows we have here is n. So we have n times n plus one many dots. So our s that we're interested in is the total number of dots that we see in our array, which is n times n plus one, divided by two because we get exactly half of them. Okay, cool. This process actually mimics one typical proof for the formula of the, this sum that we're interested in. You notice what we've done is paired every single positive integer with what appears on the opposite side of the sum and then added subsequently. So what we could have done, which mimics exactly this argument, is rewritten the sum in a backward direction, matching the n with the one, the n minus one with the two, etc. And now if we add column by column, we have two s here, and we have n plus one here, n plus one being the sum of these two, n plus one being the sum of these two, etc and there's n copies of these columns, so we get n times n plus one, which gives us our formula here. So we see how the, there's a connection between this pictorial proof and this algebraic one, both which uh, avoid induction. So let's look at another problem that is a typical problem that's used to introduce mathematical induction and has a pictorial proof that avoids induction as well. Okay, in this problem, we're given a positive integer n and asked what is the sum of the first n odd positive integers. Um, so let's start with some small values to see what this looks like. So if n is one, we get one. If n is two, this is two times two minus one, we get one plus three, which is four. Then one plus three plus five, is nine, one plus three plus five plus seven 
is 16. And so we see we're getting squares of numbers. This is two squared. This here is two times three minus one, and we're getting three squared, etc. So it looks like the sum ends up being n squared. Okay, so we could use mathematical induction to prove this, but let's see if we can get a pictorial way to do this. And we have some motivation to think about this geometrically because the sum is actually a square of a number. Um, so maybe we can arrange dots in a way to get an actual square. So let's start with this one here. We'll have one dot. Um, one thing we could try to do is mimic what we did in the last uh, sum. We can have three dots here and then five dots here, etc. cetera. Um, but if you look at this, even if we rotated things, it doesn't seem like we're gonna end up with something that's actually a square. Um, so let's go back and start with this one dot and see if we can do something to it to actually form a square. We need to add three dots to make a square. One way we can do that is by adding something that looks like a hook. So we have one dot here and then three dots here. And here we have a two by two array. Okay, now with the five dots, we can make another hook. One, two, three, four, five. And we know that there's gonna be exactly five dots because we're gonna have two here, two here, and this one left over. Okay, so we can keep doing this, alternating red, black, red, black. We don't know what this last thing is gonna end up looking like, but we know it'll look something like this. We just don't know if it's a red or blue one, or red or black one. But here we'd have a total of two n minus one dots. So how large is this array? Um, so we have a bunch of dots here and a bunch of dots here. Question mark number of dots at the bottom. Question mark number of dots going up. We've double counted this corner, so we have to subtract one. And then the total is two n minus one. So the number of question mark dots is exactly n. So this array here, is an n by n array of dots. So the total number of dots that we see here has to be n, squ n squared, which is exactly the sum that we wanted. Um, so you might notice something. At each point here, we're adding a hook that makes a square. So we're starting with an object that is a square, and then we're completing to get another square. This is actually what happens if you do the mathematical induction argument here. You end up adding 2m plus 1 to each side, which completes this square. That's where the term completing the square really comes from. You're completing this dot picture in order to get a square. Okay, so let's look at one more example of a typical problem asked in early uh, use of mathematical induction that has a nice geometric proof that doesn't use induction whatsoever. Okay, so in this problem, we're asked to determine the sum of the first n squares. So I'm gonna draw this geometrically in the following triangular array. I'm gonna write down the numbers, one, and then two copies of two, three copies of three, et cetera, up to n copies of n. Now, if we added the contents of this triangle, we notice that we have a one here, then we have two copies of two, so that's two squared, three copies of three, which is three squared, up to n copies of n, which is n squared. And so S, the thing that we're interested in, is the sum of the numbers in this triangular array. Now, the clever thing to try out is rotating this picture clockwise so that this corner ends up over here. So I get another triangle but now the triangle is laid out slightly differently. We'll have the one down here, then the twos appearing in this arrangement, the threes appearing in this arrangement, etc., and then the n's will be on this diagonal right over here. Finally, let's do one more rotation of the same kind. We'll end up with the one over here now, a two and a two, a three, a three, and a three, and then the ends 
on this last diagonal right over here. So if we were to add the contents of all of these three triangles, we'd get the sum we're interested in three times. We get exactly three times s. But now we can add up the contents in a different way, adding entry by entry. We'll get a triangle as well. And let's look at the contents of that one. So first maybe let's look at the corners. So here we have a one, an n, and an n. That's two n plus one. In this bottom left corner, we have an n, a one, and an n. That gives us two n plus one as well. And the last corner, we have an n, an n, and a one, giving us a two n plus one as well. Okay, let's look at some other corners or other parts of this picture. So maybe let's look at the entry right here. We have a two. Over here, we'll have an n minus one in this rotated picture because we have the diagonal is going along this way. So we have n's here and n minus one's here. And then we have an n here. The sum is two n minus one, which is n plus one plus n, two n plus one. Okay, and by a symmetry argument, we'll have the n minus one here um, and an n here. So this entry is two n plus one as well. Now, the interesting fact here is, and I'll leave it for you to try to figure this out, it turns out no matter where you are in this picture, your rotated counterparts will add up to 2m plus 1 regardless of where you are. So the final sum of adding up the contents of the three triangles is whatever we see right here. So 3 times s is the sum of the contents of these triangles, but it's equal to 2m plus 1 times the number of copies of 2m plus 1 that we see in this array. We have one copy, then two copies, then three copies up to n copies. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to plus n. And luckily we found a formula for this expression right here before. We said that this was n times m plus 1 over 2. And so if we rearrange, our sum that we're interested in is 2m plus 1 times n times m plus 1 all over 6. Cool. So a nice proof for the sum of the first n squares, completely using a picture. So I think the moral of the story with this problem and the set of questions is that even though we have methods for determining sums like these, um, we can use pictures to illuminate a different perspective that'll give us the same types of formulas as well. And this is a phenomenon that happens throughout mathematics where we can look at things from a different perspective, particularly a pictorial or geometric one that illuminate what's going on. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.